everyone. This tutorial is for the Children's Corner Jamie pattern. I'll be showing view F with smock in instead of gathers and no collar. However, the process is similar for all views. So to begin, you'll cut the bubble front and I put some clip marks on the pleat middle and outside where the inverted box pleats will go later on. Same thing goes for the bubble back. Then I cut out two back yokes as well as two front yokes. Finally, cut out the sleeves and sleeve bands which I didn't film, but these are 2 inches wide by whatever length for the size you're making. I'm making the 3 month size and I had a bunch of fabric left over. This is 60 inches wide fabric and there's enough for another project, maybe a couple bonnets or something. Anywho, since I'm smocking the front of the bubble, I'm taking the front to my pleater, rolling it up on my wooden dowel first and then putting it through the pleater. I decided to use 9 half rows which means I'll be smocking seven of them since two of them are for holding rows. And I have a video on pleating if you need more of an explanation. Then I found the row that was about a quarter inch from the raw edge and pulled out the pleating threads. I did this on both sides. I tied one side into knots in groups of twos or threes. Then I used the front yoke to line up the pleats. At this point, you don't have to distribute the pleats evenly, you're just wanting to tie the other end of the thread at the correct length. After you have the pleating threads tied at the correct length, then you can distribute the pleats evenly. Now, there are several ways to get the pleats to hold their position as you sew them onto the yoke, and it all depends on how much time you want to put into the garment and what kind of fabric you're dealing with. If I was working with a finer weight fabric and it was a really special garment, then I would take the time to back smock the first holding row. But since this is a thicker fabric, I can get away with running a row of stitches along the first holding row. I use a bit of a longer stitch and then move my needle so it's in line with the first holding row. One stitch, I can move the pleats a little bit, so don't stress if they are shifting on you too much when you're sewing. If you wanted to embellish with piping or lace, this would be the time to do it. Then put the yoke front right sides together with the bubble front and stitch with the pleat side up so you can see your previous stitches since you'll want to stitch right on top of them. Then attach the rest of the yoke pieces at the shoulder seam. You'll have the back pieces across from each other as well as the front pieces across from each other. Once you iron these pieces seams open, you can fold the front yokes together and iron so you'll have a crease down the center backs. I decided to embellish the top with more of that blue piping, so I'm sewing onto the neckline from one center back to the other one, which is where having the iron crease comes in handy so you know where to start and stop. Also, you can see how I'm angling the piping off so the raw edge of the piping goes into the seam. Now, if you wanted to do the collar look instead, this is where you'd sew the collars onto the neckline. Then I pinned the yokes together, matching shoulder seams, and sewed the neckline together. Then I clipped the curves and pressed the neckline into place. I also ironed the bottom edge of the line up about a half inch. Since I like to do all my hand sewing together at the end, I'll sew this into place later on. That's how the seams that join the yank pieces to the bubble front and the back will be hidden. So at this point you'll have your garment together except for the bubble back and sleeves. And let's move on to doing the bubble back. First you'll need to create the placket. And my new favorite way of doing the placket is to use the existing fabric and do not add a strip of fabric as needed by the continuous placket method. Instead, I'll fold the back down the middle and iron a crease into the middle of the fabric. With the right side of the fabric up, I'll cut down the crease about 6 inches and then cut about 5 eighths of an inch over to the left and about an eighth of an inch over to the right. And I'll zigzag both of those raw edges to enclose the fabric. Then I'll iron each side over about an eighth of an inch. I guess mine are really about 3 sixteenths or so, but you get the idea. Then iron the left side over again so it's even with the cut on the bottom, and I hope that makes sense. Once all of that is ironed in place, then you can fold the right side of the placket on top of the left side. As I'm making a girl's garment, if you're making a boy's garment, then reverse all of these cuts. You'll have the 5 eighths of an inch on the right instead of the left, and you'll put the left on top of the right instead of the right on top of the left. Anywho. So either way, that'll form a fold at the bottom of the placket. 
I ironed this fold and then ran a zigzag over it to enclose those raw edges. And by doing this method you can see that the entire placket is finished so you'll have no handwork later on and there's no visible stitches from the right side of the fabric. Like I said, it's become my new favorite placket method. <laughs> So moving on, put two rows of gather stitches on top of the back of the bubble. Then I cut a piece of piping a few inches longer than the yoke bottom so I can enclose the raw edges of the piping in the fold of the placket. Adjust the gathers so they fit on the bottom of the yoke and then sew the piping onto the bubble back. Do this for both sides of the bubble back. Then you're ready to sew the yoke back to the bubble back right sides together being careful not to extend your sewing past the iron crease at the center back. Once you're finished with that, you can iron the back yoke lining up about a half inch, just like we did with the yoke front lining. I'll pin both of these edges in place and run a basting stitch over them so they stay in place while I sew on the sleeves. To prepare the sleeves, cut two strips of fabric that are two inches wide by the length required for your size. Then I fold the band over so that the right sides of the fabric are on the outside and the wrong sides of the fabric are touching. Same difference. Then you'll run two rows of gather stitches on the top and bottom edges of the sleeve. Then sew the piping onto the sleeve band edge so that the raw edges are all in line. I cut my piping down to a quarter of an inch to make things easier. Then adjust the gathers on the bottom sleeve so they fit the sleeve band and are evenly distributed and sew that in place. Then trim the seam up so that the band will be able to fold around to the wrong side of the sleeve and I'll hand sew that later in place. Then sew the sleeve top in place, trim up that sleeve and then close it with a zigzag. Iron the sleeve seam so it's facing the sleeve. That'll give the sleeve a little poof. Although if you're making the boys version, iron the sleeve seam away from the sleeve since the boys clothes don't get that poof that the girls clothing does. I know it's a tough world. <laughs> Making sure those bands are pinned in place and the sleeve seam is pinned towards the sleeve, join the sides with French seams. And I have a video on how to do French seams that I'll link below if you need a refresher. Finally, the last machine sewing for this garment is the crotch part. And I use those clips that I made in the beginning when I cut out my fabric to fold the box fleece. So I'm matching up the two outside cuts and then the middle cut should be in the middle of the pleat, if that all makes sense. <laughs> then I draw a line two inches up with the sew line pin. And this is a new marking device for me and the verdict is still out whether I like it or not. Anywho, I, I used that line to sew along and I repeated the process for all six inverted box pleats. Then you can open up the pleats and press them with your iron. And from there, fold the raw edge over about a quarter of an inch and then over again until the crotch is in line with the sides, if that makes sense. And since my fabric is on the thicker side, I went ahead and put the snaps in now so they didn't have to go through all the layers of fabric. And I have a video on how to do these snaps and I'll link it below. Once I had the snaps in, then I sewed the crotch in place along the folded edge. Finally, fold over the raw edge of the sides about an eighth of an inch or so and then fold it over again about a quarter of an inch. Sew along the folded edge. Then I like to use a small safety pin and feed the elastic through the casing. I'll feed it until that end gets to the start of the casing and then I'll sew that down with the right side of the garment facing up so I can have those stitches meet and where the, down where the crotch is so it's nice and neat. And if I'm doing it with the right, right side of the fabric up, I'm able to see what's going on. Hope that all makes sense. Sometimes my words just fail me, I feel like. Anywho, then continue to feed the elastic through and carefully take the safety pin off when you get to the other end. And it's helpful to push all that gather fabric to the other side so it's out of the way while you're sewing. So you can sew that piece of elastic down. Again, right side of the garment facing up so you can see what you're doing and make it as neat as possible. And you can trim the elastic ends, but don't trim too much. I like to leave about a quarter of an inch so the elastic won't be pulled loose from the stitches over time. Then you just have to do the smocking and the handwork, and you're all done. So here's Audrey, about nine weeks old in this outfit. She's actually starting to outgrow it lengthwise, but she's in the 90th percentile for her height. 
and about 16 inches long from shoulder to crotch, including a very bulky di cloth diaper. So what I'm trying to say is I think the pattern is pretty true to size. And she's about 11 and a half pounds here if anyone's curious. I also made a gathered version with a white collar, and I'll link all this fabric below. If you have any questions, just leave them in the comments below. I much prefer that to a private emails or messages to avoid answering duplicate questions. As always, I appreciate y'all for watching, and I hope to catch y'all next time.